Holy smokes, guys. It's snowing. I'm heading to meet Alex. We're gonna go see Mandalorian. We get together, we'll probably do a little intro. Uh, fun fact, this is my first time experiencing snow like this. Uh, yeah, good times. Mandalorian, here we come, baby. What's going on guys? I'm Alex. And I'm Steve. And this is Black Series Rebel Celebration Day 4. And we are going to the Mando panel. Oh, where are we right now, Steve? We are in the Wind Trust Arena. We are not in the overflow. Thanks to some very, very special friends that are oh so, so minty, minty fresh. fresh. I'm losing my voice, but I'm so ready. Let's check this joint out. Thank you so much, everybody. Look out for The Mandalorian coming to Disney Plus November 12th. I think so. November 12th. Thank you, everybody watching at home. Holy shit. Holy shit. We just caught the Mando panel. We saw all that oh, so, so minty fresh. fresh footage. Speaking of minty fresh. I've always wanted snow in my beard. It's I've never. Amazing. I've been able to live that dream in California. <laughs> Quick reaction to the Mando panel, Steve. Oh, this is everything I've wanted. Like Corey Feldman oh, said, in Google, oh, this is my oh. time. When I saw IG-88 or whoever that IG unit is oh. blasting fools, I looked over at Steve and I he he went from six to 12. Holy crap, I just got water in my shoes. It's okay. <laughs> oh my God. It's all right. We loved it. It's amazing. We're sorry that the <laughs> live stream got cut out. That is right easily now. the highlight of the entire, Absolutely. entire convention for me. We got to go give some pins away. Oh. Oh, I gotta turn baby. my phone. My hands are freezing. I have to go. We gotta uh, go. I love you. Bye. It's too cold, guys. Bye. Oh, Lucas. I'm George, and this is George. I'm actually George. Yeah. Oh, great. Me too. Cool. I'm actually oh George, God. and this is my real hair and beard. I gotcha. Yeah, I like it. George Lucas. George. There he is. George. Okay. Give us some shields, guys. All right. I don't want anybody's face to look like a human face. Like the younger you. Oh. Oh. I, I bought a $300,000 microphone, like it was nothing. Mark Hamill can only jump four inches off the ground. Yeah, like an Ewok exposed to gamma radiation. Yeah, straight up, dude. Yeah, I know, spoiler alert, you blow up at the end of the movie. Let's move on. Bring it to the bank. I always do. <laughs> oh, oh. We'll fix it. Oh, gosh. I, I wish there was another way that could have gone. If only there were more floor space, but I guess there wasn't. <laughs> just loud and violent. Oh! Yeah, that's better. That was upsetting, actually, to everyone. So I think perfect. that's perfect. perfect. Great, you're going to do great. Can we oh, get a new one, a new guy? Why do you have so great heels? You heard it here first. Star Wars Episode 10, <laughs> Chewbacca Bones. <laughs> Oh boy, do we have a treat for you guys and everyone out there, including Star Wars Explained. We've found everybody's favorite droid, B-Boy 912. B-Boy 912, as you know, is from everyone's favorite episode four, Attack of the Clones, when the Sith arrive. What's your favorite thing B-Boy 9 does in Star Wars? Oh, my favorite thing without a doubt is when he eats that big slice of pizza and then gets on his skateboard and pulls that 900 out on the little mini ramp. It's my favorite part in this movie. My favorite part is when he's doing the training montage to the Almond Brothers. 
So B-Boy9, tell the folks at home how you're doing today. Let's take it back to George. Here with Matt Holland. Matt, you work at Fantasy Flight Games, which is, where, which is where we are. What do you do there? I am the organized play community coordinator, so I work with our tournaments and all that kind of stuff. I own Star Wars. <laughs> so we're here to talk about Star Wars Legion. Yes, sir. What is that? It is a great way to kind of reenact all the battles that you see in the Star Wars movies, the comic books, the games, all that stuff, but on the tabletop. Got it. Do you play it on a $45 million holographic tabletop that we all have in our own homes? No. You can use like a folding table or a dining room table, that kind of thing. What is that? That's the next step will be the, the holograms. Got it. Got it. Got it. What are we doing? Are we having epic battles? Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty good sized battles. You can have the ATSTs. You can have some tanks, some squads of infantry running around, shooting each other up. Vader can be storming through the battlefield. Oh, yeah just being an absolute terror. Where do you come down on the AT-AT versus at, at discussion? I am an AT-AT guy. I, listen, I agree with you. I'd agree with whatever you told me because frankly, I can just change it at, 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 at whim, at my own will, through my willpower. So you have an exclusive here. People we love exclusives. Vader himself comes in the core set for Legion, but for those who are lucky enough to get it at Star Wars Celebration, it is this fancy little version of him. He's kind of like raising the ground up around him. It's, it looks fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Go to your FLGS and take a look. This is George Lucas. Back to you guys. Bye-bye. I am here with Brian from the Canadian 501st. What are you doing here? Tell me a little bit about the 501st, and then uh, I got a personal question when you're done with that. All right, I'll let you know. Uh, we came down from Toronto. We brought down some of the props we have. We made the tent of sight. We have Darth Vader in there right now. We have the speeder bike. Yippee! Kids can ride on it, adults, big guys, little guys. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say big guys can ride on the speeder bikes? Oh, of course. I am really interested. It is my dream to be a stormtrooper. Is it a problem if you're a certain width? Not. Look at me. I'm a TK. I'm a stormtrooper. If it fits on me, it'll fit on anybody. Kids don't care. They see a stormtrooper, their eyes light up. You go to a hospital visit, their eyes light up. And that's what it's about. So you heard it here, guys. You're never too big of a sweaty to be a stormtrooper. I'm here with all of my cars, my entire car collection. What do you think about that, Jay Leno? Pfft, here we go. You can see on the side, I have my favorite mural of uh, Boba Fett shooting out of the ground, shooting at other Boba Fetts and what appear to be some kind of giant space buffalo. This is a Ford F-150 with a Darth Vader on the side. And if you look in the back, hanging off of the transaxle, I think you'll find a little surprise back there, if you know what I mean. We call them Vader Nuts. Hanging off the back of that truck. Vader Nuts. Darth Vader Nuts. And then right here is a Kia Soul 2007. I'll give it to you about 13.5 if you want it. It's got 54,000 miles, no power windows, no power locks. My dog sat in the back seat a lot. Uh, so I'm letting it go for a song. Come up to the ranch, I'll sell you my Kia Soul. Back to you guys. We are here with Brandon from Geeky Tiki's, and as you guys know, I've been joking around on the show that I now have a dream to build a tiki bar in my backyard. You have to do it. I mean, there's no escape. I mean, there is an escape when you have a tiki bar, because you got these beautiful cocktails. Exactly, but if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna have to go all Star Wars and do a whole Star Wars themed tiki bar. All right, well, first off, we've got our exclusive Rancor with Jedi Luke. It's a mega monster set with the two ounce mini Luke. And speaking of mini shot glasses, fans of the Star Wars Kenner collection might recognize where this inspiration came, which comes with 18 shot glasses. Uh, the C-3PO is exclusive to the show. Um, and this ships as a pre-order early, early September. I'm gonna tell you right now, oh my gosh, she's about to blow it even more, but as of right now, I'm giving everything at this booth, and oh, so minty fresh. Uh, so this is the one I've been eyeing. Tell us a little bit about this amazing guy. This is our Millennium Falcon Punch Bowl. It holds 45 ounces of your favorite beverage, or you could eat cereal out of it. You could have a bowl of chili, chips and salsa, you know, we don't judge. Okay, uh, real quick before he finishes this interview, I'm just gonna uh, put the wallet right there on the front of the tiki bar, just so I remember before we go to buy all of this amazing That's stuff. For everyone watching at home, where can they find you guys online? GeekyTikis.com. That's geeky with an I, tikis.com. Thank you so much, brother. This booth is the best. Get cracking on that tiki bar. 
I'm on it. One year into a tiki bar, one year into a divorce. <laughs> Steve, if you were going to get a Star Wars tattoo, what kind of Star Wars tattoo would you get? Uh, I definitely would have to go with Raybo, Alex. I would get Bib Fortuna right here on my neck, and then his, his little snake ears would go all the way down my body. It'd be a full body piece just of Bib Fortuna's ears. I got $10,000. Are we going to go get that for you right now? I'll have to think about it, but there are some people getting incredible Star Wars tattoos in here. And let's see what kind of sweaty is crazy enough just to put Star Wars on their body. You've all seen the trailer by now, right? Some rice. rice. <laughs> Listening to Thrice while eating, eating some, some rice. rice. Not once, but Not twice. twice. <laughs> <laughs> We're going insane. We are going insane. Okay, I've been rolling somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the Star Everything. Wars first. The Star Wars? What 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 Star Wars stuff stuck out? Well, obviously we had a episode nine panel. We had episode nine trailer. And trailer. We had um, room service with George. We had room service with George. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> oh no. I've grown my beard in such a way that I can't fit the sandwich in there. Just use your finger to hold it. George, up. Uh -oh. if you need to go to the bathroom and eat your sandwich and then come back for the next hour, you can. No, I. Am I really at this panel right now? Can we just say, what a bummer it is that this hotel doesn't have a cart and screws I gotta up tell our you. Whole yeah. breakfast bit? Yeah, I gotta tell you, we were expecting, you know, the cart, the silver. Tray covers, the yeah. steam, yeah, anyways. If you think it's not funny, that's because the hotel fucked it up. Yeah, it's the hotel's fault. We've immersed ourselves in everything George I'm surprised made. how much they're hitting Talk on it, it being the third story. act of a trilogy. It so yeah, it was awkward. It was it was awkward, but we had We don't like time. trailer reactions. Why'd you guys make us do a trailer yeah. reaction? Jeez, guys. Why have you guys been begging? Because we should have waited out in the cold all night. Um, oh. We gotta go give some pins away. Oh. oh my gosh, Jedi Fallen Order, which was amazing, my boy, I won't say his name, but a good friend of mine worked very hard on that Jedi Fallen Order trailer and I was so proud of him. It was an amazing moment for me to be in that arena and have those people watch my friend's content mm -hmm. and just be like, yeah, dude, you deserve this. You worked really hard. Yeah, I thought it was a really amazing um, experience. You know, I don't I don't play video games. That's no secret, but uh, that trailer looked plays, really great. Plays uh, Fruit Ninja. I don't even know what that is. He plays Fruit Ninja and he plays Bedazzled. I, I or it's bejeweled. I but it's not bedazzled. I, I don't even know. He plays Angry Birds. He plays Bedazzled. <laughs> he plays Fruit Ninja and Candy Crush. Yeah. I, we also have to give a massive shout out to Lacey and everyone at the Resistance Broadcast. Yeah, James. They had an John. amazing show on Saturday night. They had an amazing podcast panel. It was we really met a lot great. of their listeners that are crossover listeners with ours. We met a lot of their listeners that hate our show mm -hmm. that I think now. Oh! You okay, buddy? You okay, Gearbox? Workers, Workman's comp? What's going on? You okay? Oh. No. That was basically the thing saying, wrap that, it up. That was, that was the Raylos coming after you right now. No way, dude. The Raylos like me. I, I know. It felt really cool to like kind of put the Twitter sphere aside. And just like, That's probably my favorite thing about this entire week was the fact that, you know, I'm a grumpy guy because of Twitter. It makes things like Star Wars lately feel not fun for me at times. This week, the biggest takeaway for me was just the community, the fandom, uh, coming together and being like, oh my god, you're like a really cool human being, and like I'd like to actually get to know you and hang out and have some laughs, and it was really great to see the community as a whole sort of come together in person and just celebrate yeah. together, you know, yeah. and go crazy. At our Luminous Being shirt meetup, um, I said that this convention has made people, to me, not feel like they're just clicks and subscribers and likes and retweets and follows, but real tangible people that are part of our Black Series Rebels community, which is a subset of a much larger Star Wars fan community. And that has been really cool for me. And it was awesome to just be there and not be working and mm -hmm. be, with, be with George and be with Ryan and you and just sit there and enjoy- The fan experience. The, like have that little moment. I wanna talk a little bit about these pin meetups. The pin meetups were 
it just got better and better every day. Jar Jar was insane. Yes, we weren't ready. We weren't ready. We didn't realize how passionate you guys were going to be. Amidala was cruising. We were on that nine hype, easy. Watto was smooth. Luminous Being shirt was oh, so, so minty, minty fresh. fresh. All of you guys showing up for that. And then Darth Maul, you guys moved that line with us like we were a, a tour group at Disneyland, just, just cruising through. We got Anakin today, I'm assuming. It's going to go pretty well. But we had one other pin drop that I'd say was super special. And it was different because it was punk rock style. We were at the door waiting. Yeah. As people came in and I was like, oh, these aren't thin and out. But it's like they weren't all in one place. So people had to travel there. But our uh, emo versus pop punk night and a huge shout out to Nick from Bayside for having us be a part of that. And beauty Everyone, bar. That's why we're so tired. Mm -hmm. Everybody that came out, Amanda Jean, Matt Martin, Alex from Star Wars Explained, Molly, Molly the Resistance Broadcast, so many, so many fans. Lantern those pins. Those Raylos that I ended up becoming friends with the Resistance Broadcast mm -hmm. came and we were singing Panic of the Disco yeah. together. You know, I think it's a little bit of a different environment than a lot of the Star Wars fans I think are, are accustomed to. Everyone just got into it and had a blast and had fun. The community and culture of this show that we've been wanting to create for a long time, mm -hmm. which is like, it's not that serious. Mm -mm. And we can all laugh about this and make fun of it and make fun of ourselves. And we should be able to love it mm -hmm. and laugh at it. Together. And, and that, was the, that was the night where I was like, oh, everybody that enjoys our show, like, they're like us, and they feel the same way about Star Wars. And we've had a lot of people, we won't go to specifics, but we've had a lot of people come up and say some stuff to us that has made us feel really, really good. Yeah. Because we've worked really, really hard to create this show and this community, and it's a lot of work. We, we drove George Lucas into the ground. We drove, the guy holding the camera right now is still filming, and he literally, let me check my phone. Needs to. He's gonna be on a flight in we're gonna, he's going to be on his way to the airport in 45 minutes, but he's still willing to record just a little bit extra. Everybody was just going a little bit extra for us. And man, between, we're, we're going to be at a year in like, we're going to be at two years in a month. And to go from two years, I was at Star Wars Celebration two years ago. I had our logo pin in an Empire Strikes Back lunchbox and five people came looking for him over the four days. Mm -hmm. I met five people. I met a lot of other amazing people like Saber Bay and making Star Wars. That that celebration was what got us here. Yeah. That celebration. That but, was the beginning. But seriously though, to have five people ask for a pin over four days and today to give out 250 pins in the span of, if you add it all together, probably seven minutes like the lines everybody grabbing it hanging out you guys made it worth it this week and i'm stoked to be missing a voice i'm stoked to be tired i can't wait to just walk the floor with like nick bayside and matt martin today mm -hmm. and meet up with you guys one last time yeah and it's just a lot of love and fun and a lot of love just the community and i'll tell you what man there were some people that still brought that bad twitter juju into the sphere that's fine and everybody was like be gone with it. <laughs> Everyone was like, everybody we don't have time like, for that. Remember Bib Fortuna when he's like, ooh, ja! And he like does that thing with his arm and he goes like this, mm -hmm. towards Java. He does like a Vogue ja. move and he goes, <laughs> that was me. When everyone brought Twitter drum, I was like, ooh, ja! And I would, I would Bib Fortuna out of that joint. Just one last thing for me. Like, I gotta thank all of the fans and everyone out there because if it was not for the fans that met up with us here and the fans that you know, came along for the ride with us through our social media. We wouldn't be able to do any of this if it was not for you guys watching the videos and, and supporting us by, by picking up the pins. We and... have a new character, too. <laughs> a Patrell. Oh, yeah, we do. A Patrell. A Patrell, man. We got man. John Huey. We got John Huey. We got A Patrell. We got A Patrell. A Patrell crushed it. Thank you, MVP. A Patrell. A Patrell is the Black Series Rebels MVP. A Patrell and his adorable, I think, younger sister, mm -hmm. And I think their dog's name was F Furball, I think. I don't know. Whatever her dog's name was, he was adorable. MVPs, super awesome. Helped us start lines. Everybody was so understanding when they didn't get pins. Everybody mm -hmm. was so amazing. 
I mean, we can keep gushing or we can yeah. help Ryan get on his plane. Let's help Ryan get on his do. plane. But with that being said, guys, may the force be with you. Hey, Alex. What's up, Steve? Which is, where did we just come from? Uh, Chicago. Like, you still haven't even taken in your bags yet, man. I haven't taken in my bags yet. But. And it looks like. Something came in the mail for us. Oh, oh boy. boy. What is this? Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Is that a take it to the bank? Man, oh man. Can't beat classic branding and packaging. If you right. made it this far, that means you've watched our entire celebration special. I am going to Take a hot shower. Steve, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna take a hot shower. Then I'm gonna go into my bedroom and I'm gonna sleep till Anaheim 2020.